Hello and welcome to TBI Fireside Chat. My name is Richard Middleton, editor of TBI, and I'm delighted today to be joined by APC co-founders and CEOs, Emmanuel Guibert and Lauren Brossel. Hi guys, how are you? Very well, thank you, Richard, and yourself? Very well, thank you. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you, I'm very well. Yeah, we've got lots to get through today, lots of interesting shows that you guys are, have got in the pipeline uh, for buyers around the world, and also lots of interesting stuff that's happened over the past couple of years that we're going to touch on uh, briefly first. Um, Emmanuel, in terms of APC, for people who might not have come across you guys before, just tell us what the company does and, and perhaps uh, when you guys founded it and, and some of the shows that you've been working on recently. Sure. Uh, APC, was a, APC, which is a simple name for about premium content, much too long, uh, was created seven years ago uh, by Laurent and myself. Um, it's uh, what we call, uh, we call ourselves a boutique studio, meaning that we are distributing uh, programs on the international market, but also co-producing programs and most recently uh, producing our own shows. Um, we are active in a scripted program, but as well as documentary and factuals, and we also have a subsidiary, APC Kids, focusing on animation and, and family programs. Um, we've just celebrated our seventh birthday, and um, I guess the word boutique is also quite important because we are we founded and running the comp are running the company in a very um, curated, uh, handmade sometimes way, uh, mm -hmm. trying to create select programs, um, not too many, but really carefully um, uh, chosen and uh, trying to taking care of them in a in most uh, closest way. Mm. I mean, then that strategy seems to be working quite well for you. Obviously, it's a hugely competitive market, the European drama market at the moment. Um, but you guys, you're based in Paris, of course, and, and operate in France, but very much internationally uh, outward looking to the world. Um, just a few of the interesting, I mean, one of the ones that really caught my eye recently was Man in Room 301, which seems to have really been a success for you guys. Um, Laurent, tell us a little bit, if you can, just about that show and yeah. perhaps what it says about what uh, APC has been doing recently. So Man in Room 301 uh, is a show that we launched uh, last year. Uh, it's been hugely successful. It's, uh, it's a fabulous psychological thriller from Finland in six parts. Uh, a specificity of the show is uh, the fact that the head writer was actually a British writer, uh, Kate Ashfield, actually maybe more known as an actress than a writer in the UK because of her famous roles such as, you know, Line of Duty and a, a, a few others. Uh, it was a relatively unusual combination for a show that was initially meant for the local domestic market in Finland because it's a co-production between uh, Warner in the UK, wall to wall, and I think they brought Kate, and uh, Warner in Finland, of course, who uh, took charge of the uh, actual physical production of the show. Um, in terms of sales, uh, it's been a great success story for, for us. We've sold it to uh, the BBC. It went out on BBC4 recently with a great success, one of the best shows they had recently. Uh, we've sold it to Arte for France and Germany, to, we've sold it to SBS in, uh, in Australia, to MHZ in the, in, in, in the US and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of countries around the world. Uh, and we are um, actually working on a remake in France, no channel attached yet, but, uh, and we're doing that uh, not as a distributor, but as a co-producer. Okay, interesting. And as you say, I mean, you touched there on the sort of the, the, the nuts and bolts of the, the actual show. It was an interesting one too. We've got the Finnish partner, the UK partner, and obviously you guys uh, involved as well. It seems to be, that's the sort of bespoke nature that you're able to operate and you're able to sort of put those deals together and work within those uh, various different models. Yes, I mean, it's always been I suppose that one of the advantage um, in this industry, when you start being a, a distributor, one of the advantage is that you acquire a good knowledge and great networks um, uh, internationally. And mm -hmm. so it means that when you move into production, 
you have a lot of existing and active relationship with producers uh, pretty much everywhere, of course, buyers pretty much everywhere. And we've found that it was a hugely, it's not a facilitating factor because I wouldn't say it's easy. Nothing is easy in this business, but, uh, but it's been, I would say, tremendously useful to us. And clearly, whether it's on some distribution deals or other deals which are more corporate-like, it's extremely useful to have this capacity to aggregate several partners from various countries to package various partners and talents. And that's really, it's our bread and butter now. Yeah, and get knowledge also of what the people are looking for um, in the various markets is, is also quite helpful. So, and Emmanuel, the, um, let's move on to some of the shows that you guys have been working on really recently. Um, the Unusual Suspects is yeah. a fascinating show. Yeah, really it's actually a... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, no, tell us, yeah, tell us about the show. No, it, it's quite a, a, a hot show because we are just launching it right now. It's actually premiering in a few days, weeks, uh, in June in, on SBS, uh, the commercial broadcaster in, uh, in Australia who's commissioned it. Um, and it's, it's a, a show which is very much in the air because uh, we have heard a lot with the, the year we've just uh, past that uh, people were willing to have some entertainment <laughs> and shows, and this one is definitely uh, it's a high story, uh, but very entertaining, very bright. Uh, is um, uh, in the vein of Desperate Housewives, or more recently uh, Ocean Eight. Uh, mm. So it's um, a story, a, a female tale on, on yeah, female friendship and female solidarity with a uh, wealthy housewives, but also their uh, the nannies, and it's also um, the show is also giving a very fresh look on um, on diversity and on those hidden women uh, working in the shadow, but absolutely essential to the lives of the housewives. And, and as you say, I mean, it's a show for SBS out in Australia. They, they've got the the show initially. So, how did you guys get on board? Where you know, when did you get on board with that show? Actually, we have developed uh, since a few years uh, quite good relationships in Australia where we have found uh, great independent producers, uh, um, uh, broadcasters who are really eager, be it ABC or SBS or others, very eager to develop a premium um, uh, industry of, of scripted show that can travel uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to this um, network of relationship, we, we've been able to, to, to meet Aquarius, uh, the producer of that show. And we immediately fall in love with the uh, with the, 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 yeah, the, the fun and the, the intelligence of the show. So it, it's very smart at the same, at the same time. So uh, we are very happy, very proud of the show and uh, we're starting to, to launch it. And for, so far uh, it has raised a, a lot of interest. So we're very happy about it. It looks Great. very cool. Let's, uh, yeah, let's take a short, um, we've got a clip of the show, I think. So we'll take a short, uh, we'll take a look at that. Is money, money. This is Evie, my nanny. Money, money, Why won't you pay me? I bet this money could really change your life. I think extortion money, is the word you're looking money, for. We have a $16 million necklace that's just begging to be liberated. What do you say? When do we start? <laughs> Nothing brings people together like a little criminal conspiracy. She's trying to set me up. Do you know anything about that? No way. You're famous in the Philippines, Gigi. Infamous, it's different. We'd be stupid enough to steal from Roxanne Waters. Why would I steal from my own family? I didn't see that coming. I'm a very busy woman with the light of my... And Laurent, uh, fascinating show, um, The Unusual Suspects, lovely vistas, yeah, really fascinating characters, looking forward to seeing that one. Moving from Australia to Europe, we're, we've got Algiers Confidential, which is another really interesting uh, production that you guys have got, Arte and ZDF on board, uh, it's multiple languages. Tell us a bit about this show and, yeah, again, what APC has been able to do with it. Yep. So... It's a completely different kind of show, right? Uh, it's uh, I'll just confidential is really a modern espionage thriller, very fast-paced, uh, action-packed, 
Uh, it's also four parts, like uh, the unusual suspect, which tells us that this uh, format of four parts has become um, significantly present on the market. I mean, it used to be more, and then six parts was really important, and four parts seems to be... Um, I mean, it's not accidental that two of the three series that we've just launched at this online MIP TV market were four parters. Mm. Uh, and um, uh, it is uh, very, very scenic. Um, the action is set across Algeria, France, and Germany. Uh, you said it's mixed languages. It's true. It's uh, a lot of German, French, Arabic, English as well. Um, it's heavily packaged for a foreign language show. I mean, both the writer, the head writer, the director are actually Emmy Award uh, winners uh, with what they've done, uh, shows they've done before. Uh, and the story starts with the, um, the kidnapping in Algiers of two German officials uh, in the backdrop of a vast, um, you know, corruption scandal and a political conspiracy. Uh, and obviously there is a double investigation that uh, starts to be led, um, one by a German intelligence officer, and the other one was, of course, trying to find and save his fellow countrymen, and the other one by an Algerian female prosecutor. Uh, and the thing is, the two of them happen to be romantic romantically engaged. Uh, and of course, the, um, the interests they are serving will rapidly be totally disaligned, uh, which will lead to a, a very exciting loyalty clash and a choice to be made between their, let's call it their line of duty and their love. Uh, it's it's high stakes for these two main characters and it's really exciting. Mm. I think we've got a short clip of that one as well. So uh, if we can roll the, yeah, roll the trailer for that, please. Ces hommes planifient une attaque sur le sol allemand. On est en train de construire une nouvelle Algérie. Nous ne torturerons pas. Nous ne tuerons pas des innocents. Wir wollen nächste Reform. Zwei unserer Landsleute befinden sich irgendwo in Algerien in den Händen von Terroristen. Krass, Schüttel Mann. Das Leben unserer Landsleute ist mehr wert als die rechtzeitige Lieferung von Kriegswaffen. Haben wir in Algerien jemanden, dem wir vertrauen können? Two German citizens get kidnapped in a government compound and Sudani doesn't know anything about it? I don't buy it. You think he's in on it? Why? You never know with him. Vous n'avez aucune autorité pour enquêter sur le territoire algérien. Depuis combien de temps tu sais pour nous deux N'oublie jamais à qui tu dois ta loyauté. Il peut t'emprisonner pour espionnage quand il veut. Il s'en fout de toi. Die einzigen, die uns helfen können, sie ausfindig zu machen, sind die Algerier. Und wenn sie wegen dir ihre Waffen nicht bekommen, warum sollten sie den zwei Kerlen da helfen Das ist einfach nicht wahr. Du bist das kein Islamist. Wenn es nicht die Islamisten sind, die unsere Leute haben, wem zahlen wir dann 50 Millionen Dollar? Das stinkt nach Korruption. Pour qui vous travaillez Ich bin eigentlich bewusst, dass eine unserer Mitarbeiterinnen nach ihrem Verhör verstorben ist. Ich me doute que cette histoire avec un étranger pourrait devenir utile. You let them take two Germans. We're not going to threaten the stability of a regime just to save two men's lives. Das ist die eine Revolution Pop. Pas moi. In terms of that mini-series that we were talking about there, Lauren, I mean, as you say, a couple of the shows that we're talking about today have got that four-parter. Um, what is it about that that you think really works well at the moment? As Laurent was saying, uh, as Laurent was saying, recently we have seen the, the trend of, of, um, of, of broadcasters asking for sh shorter series, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially the, the traditional broadcasters uh, wanted to one take less risk and two create more events uh, on air. Uh, mm -hmm. So having shorter series enable that. Um, when we speaking about platforms, I would say they are they, they are less on, on these short volumes. They are more obsessed with the fact that the shows are returning and are able to provide further seasons. Yeah, fascinating. We've also got Gloria on the slate, really interesting show. Um, Emmanuel, tell us about Gloria and what the show's about. And also again, 
uh, what it says about APC and the way that you're able to work with with uh, other production partners and broadcasters. How does uh, yeah? How does it all tally up? Yeah, Gloria is a is a domestic thriller. Uh, it's, it's a story of a happily married and happy happy mother of three kids, Gloria. Uh, and one morning, uh, her husband is leaving to work and never comes back. So that's the beginning of the series. And it recalls you maybe something because this show is actually the French remake of Keeping Faith that you you must know it has been a tremendous hit on the, the BBC iPlayer. I think the, the iPlayer was showing the third season of Keeping Faith uh, very recently in the UK and I think it, it hits a new record of, of views. I think it reached the 50 million uh, bar, uh, which, which is uh, remarkable. And, uh, and the show has been remade by TF1. Um, uh, it's very different. The two shows with the same pitch and the same story have actually uh, uh, different styles and different uh, look and feels. Gloria is uh, maybe a little bit more thriller. Um, it's only six episodes when uh, Keeping Face was eight. And, uh, and we hope it will have the same uh, success with uh, new seasons coming up. Great stuff. I think, yeah, we've got a clip of that. So let's take a look at, uh, let, let's take a look at Gloria. Qu'est-ce qu'ils disent Ils ont trouvé le corps. C'est un homme. Ils sont en train de le remonter. T'es très très belle. Très belle. Waouh, t'es trop belle maman. C'est vrai, t'es magnifique. Salut les petits monstres. Gros bisous papa. David Je ne sais pas ce qui se passe avec ton téléphone. Tout le cabinet te cherche. Toi qui voulais pas que je retravaille tout de suite, je suis carrément en train de te remplacer. Lieutenant Vous étiez au courant que votre mari avait souscrit une assurance d'essai Vous êtes en train de dire que j'ai tué mon mari Mais j'ai rien à cacher. Bah, espérons que votre mari non plus. Bon, je suis vous. C'est vous qui fabriquez ça. Elle voulait quoi Juste sachez une chose, ils sont dangereux, c'est pas des gentils. Il est tout seul, ton mari Il nous a piqué 300 000 euros. C'est toi qui vas nous les rembourser. Je suis en train de chercher moi-même s'il faut. Pas rien Je cherchais vraiment la merde, moi. Elle était au vestiaire, dans la salle de cours, mais personne n'avait sorti. On va la retrouver. Les enfants, c'est ce qu'il y a de plus important. Mon fils vous a donné jusque jeudi pour nous rembourser. Alors trouvez une solution. Ah Rendez-moi tout de suite ma fille, espèce de taré Maman Maman David Sors du véhicule, bas sur la tête C'est bon And Emmanuel, in terms of Gloria, I mean, as you say, it's a scripted format that you guys have remade. When did you guys get involved with it? When did the APC get on board with that, that show? Being the distributor of Keeping Face, uh, we were obviously supervising also um, the remake deals, uh, obviously uh, very close with, with, the, with Vox Pictures, the producer. And, um, and the opportunity uh, sound was really important uh, in France. Uh, we did that with um, an, another producer called Quad, uh, who is a very well-established uh, producer in France. Um, and very quickly, TF1 uh, um, bought the idea, and, um, and that's it. So being uh, being uh, on Keeping Face obviously has helped us to uh, to, to supervise uh, the, the, the remake and, and make sure that it was uh, loyal to the concept and at the same time very different. I think if I may jump in on this one, it's a, I think it's a good illustration of the beauty of the boutique model, because it's how you take care of a brand, keeping face and develop it as much as you can. Keeping face, of course, now over three seasons, we started uh, being on board with keeping face back in 2017 at the time of season one. but. Uh, the show has been sold all over the world. Uh, we have this remake now uh, that's uh, being done in France. We're still having conversation elsewhere for, for a potential remake. And actually, we did something similar with our Norwegian series Valkyrian four years ago uh, by you know, selling the right to uh, ERA Pictures, Liza Marshall's company. And that's uh, has given birth to Temple, the Sky Show, which is now is is as two seasons um, so it's 
it's basically what you, when you look after a limited number of shows, that's typical mm -hmm. of the kind of thing you can do. If you look after 200 shows at the same time, the only thing you can do on the remake is to sell option, sell option, sell option to the US. And that's generally not the best way to have a remake done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, the, the Gloria has been aired very recently on TF1 last month and made great ratings. Uh, it performed over 30% um, market share for, uh, for the six episodes, which is uh, quite remarkable. Yeah, indeed, especially in such competition that it is up against. I mean, just I and mean, we've only got a couple of minutes left, but just in terms of, sort of the European market at the moment, I mean, you guys know it inside out. Emmanuel, how do you sort of see the on the on the, on the sort of broadcaster streamer side of things? How do you see it developing and and what's APC's role in, in the burgeoning uh, drama demands of, of all those buyers? We've got streamers from the States coming in domestic streamers, um, broadcasters looking for content. How does APC fit into all of that? Uh, we, we try to uh, listen to the market. We also obviously uh, make our choice very much based also on uh, what we like, what we believe in uh, with, uh, with some passion. So uh, it's, it's great that the market has extended with so many new outlets. Uh, and uh, our role is to yeah try to uh, either um, uh, distribute or, or invest or uh, co-finance or, or develop or produce shows uh, that can find their room uh, anywhere. And uh, you, you, you said you, we were based in Paris, but we have also a, a development office in London. So we, we try to work also in, uh, as you said in the introduction, and very different languages and with partners from everywhere. We yeah. work, if I may add, we work less and less uh, according to the old distribution model, where you would basically, as a distributor, get to invest and be offered the opportunity to invest in a show at the time of green light, just before production. Uh, that's what we do less and less. More and more, we are uh, coming early in the development, in the financing, uh, and hopefully uh, next year, 2022, should be the moment where we will start distributing uh, our own productions, which doesn't mean that we will stop distributing third-party shows, of course, but we'll have the two pillars. Right, and so. we also make sure that our portfolio is qualitative, but also uh, diversified. So we have shows from everyone. So the, coming, uh, the upcoming shows, I think we have shows coming from Belgium, from Switzerland, from uh, Italy. Uh, Iceland, from Italy, from uh, another, from Australia. So. They are all very different, different format, different origins, uh, because again, the market is so large that you need to, to have something for everyone. Excellent. Is there anything yeah, in terms of uh, sort of what's coming up, anything we can talk about specific shows or uh, is it all being kept under wraps for now, uh, Laurel? No, no, I mean, there are a couple of things that we can announce. Uh, there are four uh, shows that uh, are launching just after the summer at, at MIPCOM. Uh, and as uh, and it's a perfect illustration of what Emmanuel has just said in terms of the diversity of uh, genre and um, of territories. Uh, we have a show called Ever After, and that is coming from Italy, and it is a portrait of a broken couple, so more on the relationship drama side. We have a show called Lucky Day, uh, and Lucky Day is an hilarious Swiss comedy about a not so ordinary family. Uh, who becomes rich uh, completely accidentally. Uh, we have Blackport, uh, a show uh, from Iceland uh, that show actually how power and money can break up a family and a whole community in a fishing village in, in, in Iceland. And, uh, and we also have Pandora. Uh, and Pandora is a political thriller from Belgium that uh, tells a story of uh, a collision between politics and justice. So uh, all very different, a variety of things. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Um, we, we, I, we have, we've overrun already, so we're going to have to wrap it up there. But really interesting uh, shows that you guys have got coming up. Huge, diverse uh, sets on the slate there, as you say. Um, and really interesting to see, yeah, about how you guys can get involved. Uh, anyone watching, I'm sure you uh, yeah, we'd be more than happy to, to get in touch with uh, APC and uh, get them on board. So. 
we will have to wrap it up there. APC co-founders and CEOs, Emmanuel Guibert and Laurent Boissard, thank you very much for your time. Lovely talking to you. Thank you, Richard. Thank, thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard.